Hello, today is a video about an unusually named laptop which uh, I came across called a Chewy C-H-U-W-I laptop and it has all the hallmarks of strange Chinese uh, supply with the, the Chinese font on the barcodes and stuff. So on the case in the cellophane wrap is some kind of weird uh, silicon keyboard uh, in a UK layout and a plastic VIP card on the top of the case of the details about the processor and specifications got quite a high resolution screen and in my case it's an i3 processor 6157U and the other than being chewy it's a core book pro 13 inch laptop so there we go, you've got the strange silicon type keyboard cover and a VIP card and the keyboard cover becomes apparent when the laptop's opened where it has a US keyboard layout so rather than have multiple types of laptops with different keyboard layouts I guess they find it cheaper just to uh, ship a weird cover that you put over the keyboard so some thought has gone into the packaging there's a little hole that you can pick out uh, one of the bits of foam and uh, it's in a case. It's a fairly heavy feeling laptop. It doesn't feel cheap like some, uh, for example, the Geo books. Uh, they feel really cheap, light and plasticky. This um, laptop has a sensible weight. On the back of the phone packaging is a bit like Apple do, a cardboard holder containing some manuals. There's also a cardboard box within the, the main original box which has the power supply in it. The power supply is quite large and I would say the lead which goes in at the laptop end is fairly small and flimsy. It's not particularly robust if uh, somebody trips over the lead that will almost certainly get snapped off. So the power supply outputs 19 volts at 3.42 amps, which is quite a standard output for a laptop power supply. And inside the little cardboard holder, you've got a couple of things, something to do with uh, warranty, something to do with quality checking, and then yet another uh, performance report or some supposed quality check thing, which looks like it's probably just mass printed and chucked in there. Uh, and a manual. Only one side of that manual is English, the rest of them are all in different languages. Taking the laptop out of its carry case or uh, packing case, as I say, feels quite heavy, quite well built. USB 3 socket on the back right of the machine and a um, SD card slot and a headphone socket and on the left side of the machine is a USB-C and the power cord as well or oh, sorry the power socket opening the machine up this is where we see why they've got the uh, keyboard cover because it's a US layout keyboard so that in the UK there's no uh, Great British pound sign and also the at and the speech mark symbols will be swapped. Now my worry was that this wouldn't stay very well on the keyboard but actually it seems to stick quite well or kind of cling to the keys below it quite well. I actually had difficulty trying to retrieve it uh, as you can see here trying to pick it back out so unless you're determined to pick it out it actually stays quite well. Uh, one thing I will point out is this keyboard, at least in the UK mode, does not have a backslash key, or at least that I could find. There's no backslash key printed on the uh, silicon cover. And uh, the other thing that you cannot do is there's no home or end keys either. So here I had trouble switching the machine on, which I assumed meant that it hadn't come with any charge in it. But once I plug it in, as you'll see, that actually it still doesn't turn on. And to get the machine to switch on, from being in its off state you have to hold the power button down for probably about one second before it does actually respond and switch on. So this one came with Windows pre-installed on it and pretty much as you'd expect it's just Windows from this point onwards.
Once you're into Windows, Windows will activate when it's online. But also out of the box, the machine comes with a very old build of Windows 10. So uh, if you are on the verge of potentially reinstalling the machine with a more up-to-date install media, I would definitely recommend doing that. In my case, it came with version 1909. And there we have it. I was also interested in booting it off of USB. So here goes. You're holding down shift while pressing restart and restarting the existing install of Windows and selecting a different boot device. Get a brief uh, show of some other UEFI uh, boot detail before the Windows loading uh, or setup loading spinner appears on the screen. And there we go. I used the machine for probably a good hour, maybe an hour and a half after in reinstalling it. It seemed pretty good. Uh, the fan is quite loud, so if it's doing Windows update or if you're doing something that's CPU intensive, it's certainly appeared to be louder than, uh, I guess, what it's trying to compete with, which would be uh, a MacBook Air or something similar. Um, you could definitely hear the fan probably from a couple of meters away, um, whereas a MacBook, you don't. I don't know how much they cost, but I was pleasantly surprised at the quality of this machine. The, the biggest letdown, I'd say, is the silicon keyboard cover uh, and not having all of the UK layout keys on the machine. But I guess maybe for US people, this would be a perfect machine. I'd be interested to know what other people have found with these, because I've only used it for a very short period of time. I don't know what the failure rate of them is, the durability of them is. Um, so if you do have one, or if you're thinking of getting one and you do get one, um, please do leave a comment because I'd be interested to know exactly how it went for you. If this video has been helpful to you, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications switched on, but the subscriber numbers really are helpful. Thank you very much.